Good afternoon, everybody. Um, putting a little closure on Saturday, going back and, and looking at things. A couple of things really stuck out. One, uh, what we had to do was stay on the field, and we weren't able to stay on the field. We were, I think, one of 12 or one of 13 on third downs, and you can't do that on the road, and you can't do that in the type of offense that we want to play. And then um, just explosive play battle. They uh, had, you know, I think, 10 explosive plays to us, that's 20 or more, and I think we had like two. So that, those are two big factors that uh, we've won in the first few games and didn't obviously win that in, on Saturday. So um, cleaned a lot of things up uh, as a coaching staff um, that we talked about uh, on Sunday. Uh, I think the biggest thing uh, was the amount of things that we had in on third down, probably the two weeks to prepare. We need to, we need to carve that up a little bit. and. Uh, Mess and I and the offensive staff visited about that and uh, obviously we're still constructing the game plan but we need to be um, a lot sim simpler on third down and I uh, uh, had a good workout yesterday uh, in preparation uh, for a really good Baylor team that's 4-0 and, and, and playing well and playing with a lot of confidence so we've got our hands full this week. Coach you kind of already hit on it but I was going to ask with the benefit of hindsight what's something in the game plan that you, you would have changed and then something that worked better that maybe you would have even I think the biggest thing was the just the amount of calls that we probably had in offensively, especially on third down. Um, and part of that is having the two weeks to prepare. You just keep looking at stuff and finding things, um, you know. And uh, efficiency of running the football in the second half on first down. I think uh, we were seven of eight, four more yards, and I would have not thought that. Doesn't mean that we were successful then ultimately on second and third, but uh, our first down efficiency in the, in the second half was better than I thought. Chris, after playing your first uh, Big 12 game on the road, how do you feel about these next three games at home? And that said, how crucial does it become for you guys to have a good performance on Saturday? Well, the fact that we're just coming home in general is good because it's been since uh, middle of September since we've uh, been at home, or early September, I should say, that once we've been at home. Um, I just look at the, this next one, forget that there's three in a row at home. Just this is the most important game. Uh, it's the most important week of preparation. Uh, today's the biggest day because we, we've got to uh, continue to improve. And that's something that uh, uh, we talked about with the, with the older guys and the captains is um, we, in all phases, we need to get better. And um, this is going to be a big week for us. couple things. One, they, it's an older defense. A lot of upperclassmen on defense that have played an awful lot of football uh, and, and they're hitting their fits really fast um, and uh, I think they're flying to the football. They're really fast on defense. They know what they're doing on defense. I've been uh, really impressed watching those guys fly around. Uh, I do not have any more clarity. It, it truly will be a week-to-week -week deal, um, and um, we're hoping he can do some things this week in practice. And as long as he's out, and given that he said to talk to the student, I think he feels a bit better job getting open yep. in the last game. Are there any opportunities now to get to work in some other players at receiver and maybe expand the personnel in that area? We're going to look at everybody, but we, we also have to design some things for those guys to, to get open and, and design some things where we protect a little longer um, so that we can uh, find some openings and find some cracks. But, uh, um, yeah, without question, we're, we'll, we'll look at everybody, but we're also going to do a little bit more probably K-State versus K-State this week than we did um, last week. We did it during the open week, didn't do it as much last week. We'll get back to it so that uh, – uh, all the wideouts are going against the top corners and top safeties during the week. What's your question about uh, Elijah Sullivan? He's done this year. Um, for starters, he moved from Will Linebacker to Mike Backer in practice 14 or 13 of spring ball, uh, and uh, and then when J Ball got hurt, and then just being a Will Backer for most of his life to go to play the middle doesn't seem like a lot to the to the layman uh, people but uh, in football terms that's tough because you're the quarterback of the defense now and uh, he's done a really good job of settling in there and then when we lost Fletch we moved him back to Will and he had to play both spots and that's difficult uh, on anybody especially somebody that's just learning a new position and um, I think he's playing better and better and I think he's getting more comfortable we played him at nothing but Mike last week which I think um, allowed him to to get comfortable and allowed him to play faster. Yeah, 
topic of other receivers, how did you think John Holcomb did in his couple of snaps that, that he had? There? You know, he, he plays fast. That's the one thing that um, we were excited about watching John. He, he gets off the football fast. He, um, he can block the point of attack. We played him at tight end during the week uh, of practice last week, and he's physically blocked the point of attack. And um, he wants to he wants to be involved, and that's the that's a really good thing. Now, technique wise, knowing knowing the the tight end position or the flex position uh, is going to take some time, um, but he's at least wanting to learn so that he can help our football team. And so uh, he's doing some really good things. Now, is he ready to play 60 snaps there? No, um, but we're hopeful that uh, the more he can understand, the more he can be out there. And when he was in there at quarterback, what, what were the biggest issues just communication-wise? Just, I, I think one of them was read wrong on a wristband, and uh, one of them, um, I, I don't think we had the right personnel out there, but we, there's no question they were both supposed to be out there. And uh, we had miscommunication. Can't happen, though. We, we've got to clean it up. Can't, absolutely can't happen. How important is it to get back to uh, establishing a physical run game, especially? Well, we need to have it go for 60 minutes more than just the start of the game. We, we need to be able to, to avoid second and 10 and avoid third and eight. And uh, um, I'm confident in our offensive line's ability because we've got a bunch of older guys there that uh, know that uh, uh, we need to, to identify things and play faster and play better there. Um, but w for us to be successful on offense, we have to be able to rush the football. Does that mean we have to rush it for 300 yards? No, but we have to rush it with enough success to open up the play action. Once they kind of took away the running game early um, and, you, and you had some problems getting guys open, were you really doing tough as an offense? Yeah, for the most part, you know, because we couldn't stay on the field. We couldn't get into a rhythm. If you have an eight, nine, ten play drive, maybe you can get into a rhythm. You know, all that being said, I mean, we're down ten to nothing, and, and Wyatt makes a strip sack, and we've got the ball first and ten, and we have it at second one at the 30, that if we get a first down and get points out of that drive, you know, whether it's ten to three or ten to seven, does the game change? I don't know, but it gives us more confidence instead. Um, we have a penalty and we don't we don't get the first down and now kind of took a, a little momentum away. But does does that mean it's go, was going to change the outcome? Not necessarily, but it would have helped our momentum. You all have been pretty consistent and transparent on just looking at things day by day and week to week. But with an injury like Malik or, or anybody, yeah. do you look into the bye week, into next week, and start to think, well, how much of a risk is it bringing back now when we have that and try to avoid that? Part? We avoid that. You know, Fletch practiced yesterday. Uh, does that mean he's going to play this week? No, but at least he's back practicing. Um, if We had a number of guys that missed practice yesterday, but that's pretty typical after a Big 12 game. Um, I don't think anybody will be out, but we just had a number of guys that missed. If Malik can do some things, and we'll find out Wednesday or Thursday if he can do some things, then we're going to play him. I just can't tell you if, if, if he'll be able to or not until um, Mindy and the, and the medical staff you know, get him out of the boot and see what he can do on, on Wednesday or Thursday. Yep. But in your mind, is there maybe one or two guys you're really kind of looking at saying Sebastian or Joshua? No, nah, it's, it's all of them. It, it, it's all of them. And it's, it's the offensive line, and it's the quarterback, it's the running back, it's the defense. It's, it's, it's everybody. You know, everybody had to play better when we didn't have Wyatt Hubert at Mississippi State, and everybody did play better. Um, and if we don't have Malik, everybody has to, has to raise their level of play up. Yep. Burning a red with him. Is there any thinking that we can't go soon? We might yeah, we haven't really discussed that just because I know how much he wants to play and how thin we are. Uh, really, not necessarily at the linebacker position. Uh, we are a little bit there with three, but on special teams as well. Can you give us the backstory behind the new alternate uniforms and what it was like to show up to the it was, it was uh, pretty cool. Something we've been talking about for. Uh, an awful long time of um, the white helmet and white pants and um, you know with Kenny's crew and, and visiting with us of when we were going to pull that out you know we wanted to didn't want to do it early in the season wanted to wait till uh, uh, a conference game and this seemed like a perfect time to do it um, we needed to unveil it yesterday just so that the guys Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday have a chance to to wear the helmet that's the biggest thing you know you can't 
unveil that on a Friday, the kids would freak out if they have to put a helmet on they haven't worn for, for the whole week. And, and uh, I didn't want to put it out in the open week and, and have that out there for two weeks. And so this just seemed like the right time. Let's just start with it's the same thing. Let's just start with this week and see where we're at. We 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 just trying to get through week to week. What are those on the cleanup list assignments on on breaking it down and film room and cleaning it up on the practice field? You, know, you just said it both breaking it down in, in film and then taking what you what you learn in the in the classroom to an individual setting in in practice where you're just working with your own position. To, to maybe a group setting where you're working with the tight ends and the old linemen or the running backs and quarterbacks, to taking it into a team setting to work it against uh, like the first defense, to taking it into a scout team setting. I mean, it's it's repetition, repetition, repetition. And uh, the one thing that um, you know we need to do a better job of is you can you can watch something uh, and feel like you you understand how to block it, how to how to scheme it up, how to make sure you're in the right fit on defense. But when the pictures change, which they always do every Saturday because not everybody lines up in the same thing as what you practiced, um, you, you just have to be ready to adapt and adjust. And that's something that, uh, I'll, I'll be honest, with us just being three games into our tenure here, there's a lot of adapting and adjusting we haven't been able to do yet. And you look at the three games we've had, we had two blowout wins where we played a half and then a really good football game at Mississippi State we're talking, we have two games of things to evaluate on and to continue to try to adapt and adjust when people do some things differently. And that's something that nobody wants here, but we're gonna go through some of those growing pains and we have, to, um, we have to find our way through those and make sure that we eliminate some of those mistakes. All that being said, our kids played their absolute tails off for 60 minutes and with seven minutes left, we're down 10 and have a chance to get a stop on a third and three that tells me these kids never gave up. They were battling there all the way to the end, and, and we had a chance late. How positive of a step did you feel like it was for special teams in general on Saturday? Well, I was really pleased with Blake um, because he came and banged in a, a couple of long field goals that uh, we're going to need him to, to continue to be accurate and continue to have great confidence. Um, you know, I thought Devin punted the ball well. We need to shore up some things in protection on punt. Um, it wasn't maybe as close as, as it maybe looked uh, live uh, to, to a block, but we need to shore some things up. And um, we're always trying to get better at the return game. Obviously, we had the big one against Mississippi State, but that's, that's an ongoing battle of always trying to improve on our return game. Another question on Elijah Sullivan. Yeah. Well, he's done it more by example. I want him to be more vocal. Um, but when you weren't the vocal guy and all of a sudden you're thrust into that role, sometimes it takes time um, to feel comfortable, to get out of your comfort, comfort zone. And um, he's starting to do that. Uh, he can do it by his play because everybody, everybody really respects how, how fast he plays, how hard he plays. Uh, I want him and I'll challenge him to be more vocal um, but I just love the way he's playing and how fast he's playing. And, and you know, er, er, there are no loafs, there are no plays off. That kid plays at a million miles an hour, and that's what I so appreciate when you flip on the film. You say, boy, that kid loves the game and loves to play. Um, now, can he be more vocal? You bet. We need him to be more vocal. I know you've had a limited time with him just since the game, but how hard did Skyler take the loss and what's his response on that? You know, he took it hard just like I took it hard, just like everybody that cares takes it hard. I had a, a pretty good visit with him in my office yesterday. A um, couple things. One, how proud I was the way he competed and, and how he never gave in and he never got down. He never got discouraged. Even if he did, he didn't show it. He just kept battling. Um, and then we talked about some things schematically that we, we'd like to maybe make some adjustments on. Uh, some things schematically that I'd like him to be more involved with. Uh, but that's, a, that's the progression of a quarterback. That's a progression of, of somebody that's you know, still learning our system. And uh, I know that uh, as highly competitive as he is, uh, I'm excited to watch him continue to grow as we move forward this year. Just wanted to get your thoughts on the bill passed by California yesterday, profiting off of image and likeness, and maybe how that impacts your recruiting now that you're looking to recruit that. 
Well, it, it, um, it, it was going to come sooner or later, and I still think there's going to be a bunch of layers to it uh, that we're going to learn about over the next three and four years. Uh, and so um, I, I know it's the landscape of, of the NCA and all of those things are changing. Let's just see how we all adapt to it over the next three or four years. Did I make a, a, an initial thought on it? Not really, just because it's, it's kind of a long ways away. But I know that we need to probably in off seasons be proactive on what we're going to do. I mean, I know it's a game of hypotheticals, obviously, but the more stays continue to add it, does that make it very important for the state of Kansas to, to start moving that way? Yeah, I, I don't really have an opinion on it. Yep. Change out of it. What did you and your staff learn from those two? Instances? Well, it's pretty simple. You got to get a first down. I don't mind us taking a shot like we did to Nick Nick Lenners on the one. That was a that was a really designed, well designed play, and um, they covered it pretty well. But we still had an opportunity there. Um, but then you know you you just need to be able to get. We need to be able to get a yard on third and third down, fourth down, whatever it may be. We just um, that that's that's the frustrating part that I know that Coach Mess and the offensive staff are. Uh, are continuing to battle and continuing to understand that, that we have to stay on the field. I thought our defense did a nice job, but we got to stay on the we got to stay on the field so that you know they they only had sixty some plays. They just were really productive sixty some plays. If we could have gotten our play count in the sixties and limited them another ten snaps, it would have helped us. We just have to stay on the field. Baylor uh, kind of like you guys has a number of different backs that use it off of different yeah. things. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think they're really good at the skill positions, and it starts with the quarterback. I think he's a tremendous football player, um, can beat you with his arm, can beat you with his with his legs, keeps plays alive really, really well. I was really impressed with him. Uh, obviously watching the first few games where they had some blowout wins, but against Iowa State that does an awful lot of things on defense, uh, pressures and, and different pictures, and I thought uh, he managed the game exceptionally well. And then on the two-minute drive, he won the game. He just flat won it because he just made plays. And so it starts with him. Um, and uh, it, But, no, they have really good backs and receivers. I, there's a pretty remarkable stat from, from Baylor here that they've lost seven picks in their last nine games. And last year they blocked an extra point against K-State. Yeah. So I think sometimes people seem to assume that you, know, you guys lose your first year of the kicking game, that there really should never be a block. So how much, do you, how much more do you emphasize the importance of, of – you bet. It's always a big emphasis, but um, those things do alarm us. You know, whether it's a yeah, you know, just like when we had the big return against Mississippi State. I know that people know that special teams is always good at K State, but I think that made Oklahoma State put that much more emphasis on it. Same thing with us. Uh, you know, they have blocked a, a number of kicks, and and a lot of it is penetration and guys getting after it and. Um, refusing to be blocked because it's not like they had anybody free coming. They just they did a great job and, and uh, uh, got the penetration, were able to get the block. And so just your technique, your fundamentals, all the things you work on from the spring through fall camp have to, uh, you know, you have to make sure you show up on those uh, in that phase of the game. And, and I, I don't want to sound kind of like a, a ridiculous question, but you, you've won so much the last six, seven years. Mm -hmm. Do you find it easier to get over losses? Because, you know, it's like, hey, I've got so many. <laughs> Yeah, no, you, you, you take them harder, I'll be honest. You know, at, at North Dakota State, every win felt like a relief, and that's terrible to say. It really is terrible to say that it was a relief because you were a target every week. I mean, everybody circled that game every week for eight years, and so you won a game, and, you, and I'd come home and I'd say, man, why am I not enjoying this? I'm more relieved. So when you did lose, it just – tore your heart out and it, and it does and I'm a competitor by nature and I was really frustrated in myself that we didn't win I was frustrated in general that we that we didn't play our best football um, but I think it's going to reveal a lot of things from character resolve the leadership starts with me uh, then spreads out through mess and haze and the staff to the players um, you know when adversity strikes you better be able to rise up and uh, that's the message that uh, we've given the guys, and, and we've talked about it as a staff. And uh, losing, nobody wants to lose. It's, it does. It's, everything's worse during the week. 
And that's just the reality of it is. And sometimes people get lost in the fact you, you win a game you shouldn't win, you still won the game. And nobody's going to end at the end of the season and say, you know what, you should have been 7-5, and five, but you were 8-4. and four. I'd say, so we were 8-4. and four. It's like you shouldn't have won a national championship because you should have lost game whatever. So we won the national championship. That's all that people really worry about at the end of the year. So no, losing stinks. I think the unique thing for me is I think they've transformed their defense from the last time that K-State played them. The last time that K-State played them, obviously I wasn't a part of that, and Barnes ripped them. And uh, they were in a lot of four down, and now they're in a ton of three down. And uh, I don't know if that had any, I wasn't there, I don't know if that had anything to do with um, the, the kind of schematic change, but they are much more three down in whatever we saw in last year's game we don't really want to even use because it's just it's so different last year to this year. You talk about some schematic things offensively. Defensively it happened a little bit against Nichols, maybe not so much against Bowling Green and Mississippi State, but Oklahoma State kind of got you up the middle. Are there some things you have to address on that side as well to avoid that? Yeah. Um we have to identify it better more than anything you know we we have to identify the the stacks so to speak in in, in the levels of the linebackers so that we don't give up that penetration because you're exactly right you can get the edge if you can stop the penetration if you can't stop the penetration you know you, you can't get the edge you can't you can't uh, crease them inside and, and that's something that obviously we um, learned an awful lot I hope from from Saturday is the the inside penetration especially in a three down front especially in a three down front with backers uh, and against Baylor their safeties will be blitzing a lot. Maybe you're not as big as a nerd about this as some of us but what's your favorite detail of the helmet or the uniform? What part huh. of it do you like the best? I don't have one I, I honestly because this is I mean it's it's all different and new to you guys um, I, I just I, I don't get caught up in it, you know. We could wear whatever, and we better play better and play well in what we're in. Um, so no, I, I don't get caught up in the uniforms. Anything else? All right, All right thanks, guys. Thanks.